stopping. I stopped there, but I was I had to roll forward a little bit. What we're going to be doing here is replacing the brakes on this. Pretty much everything besides the drums it might spare a drum here or a, a nut here and there, but other than that, it's going to get replaced. We got all new pads for the rear, shoes for the front. Most uh, should have all new springs and uh, all new cables. Anyway, uh, currently there's a broken cable in the front, and I'm not aware of the condition of the shoes. Just gonna buy new shoes. Well, they are already here. They're cheap enough anyway. Um, the rear brakes do work, but everything's at maximum adjustment. As well as there's uh, the cables are in pretty well disarray. So by the time this is done, everything should feel fresh, have plenty of adjustment, and everything should stop really good. Now, with that being said, in the condition that it's in, just with the rear brakes and the gears, it does stop well with using the gears, but um, where you will fall into problems is coming down an incline where you lack the proper power to actually stop your forward progress, and uh, which you would know that would be bad on a steep incline, but moderate inclines for the average trail goer, um, they're going to want to be able to really control their speed. So that lacks the braking power to do that. Once everything's done, it'll be um, just the way you would expect it. So let's get into it. Okay, let's loosen these wheel nuts and get jacked. Here it is possible to see the cable missing here. And it is intact here. Right here is the junction box. I The cables I got have a brand new junction box and it goes all the way up from the wheels to the junction box and up to the uh, perch for the brakes. Um, that was kind of an expensive part. It was $80 on eBay. However, that's the only one I was able to find. So it's kind of cheap and uh, that was new as well. So one thing about these old brake systems they're kind of antiquated they may be some they may be re reliable of course but when they use fancy things like a junction box where pretty much um i think yamaha might have been the only one to do this use a junction box um you're going to need to pay the extra dollar to uh replace these parts but really if you think about it that's not too bad this whole brake job is going to cost about 120 bucks, and so regular maintenance does cost money. I mean, you're going to pay a couple extra bucks, but if you want your machine to perform well, it's what you're going to do, and it's usually cheaper than buying something else. On this four-wheeler, the uh, hub is actually the drum. Um, anyway, in order to remove the, the drum, take off the castle nut, the cotter pin, which is in the castle nut, the washer. Once that's done, you can pull out pull off the drum. You can see that there's not a hub and a drum, it's all one piece with the uh, studs put in there, which confused me at first. Um, I figured it'd be separate. The shoes on here aren't that bad, but I got new shoes, so I'm just going to change them. You know, just keep these for spares. And, um, may never use them, but I already bought them, so I'm going to put the new ones on here while I got everything apart. Not much needed to say. And shoes will pretty much just fall off here and then you put the new shoes on do all by hand see that was hard it's been a while since I did a set of these shoes anyway it's much easier actually to leave the springs on them and it's actually how they come packaged if they have the springs and then put it on the four-wheeler um, 
Otherwise, it's pretty much impossible to do it any other way because the bottom shoe will... There's nothing to hold the bottom shoe in place anyway. It's actually not that bad. Just you got to muscle a hair. So that's what you do. No problem, Odo. I've got the drums back on, center nuts on, cotter pins on, and then the uh, dust covers on. I had to trim the brake pads, the brake shoes, I should say, on this to get the drums on, which is something I find I routinely need to do, which is an extreme annoyance uh, with aftermarket pads. I like to say that OEM shoes, uh, you wouldn't need to, but I'm not sure. I never actually use OEM for stuff this old. So, need a good um, grinding wheel or something to do that with. That's what I used. Right here, I'll show you. I just used uh, like a sanding wheel on a, well, this is a cheap grinder, but I mean, it works. Might need to just trim the shoes. You can see where it's hitting when you go to put the drums on and just keep trimming until you can finally put the drums on. Simple as that. It's extremely annoying, but uh, that's the only way you're going to get the drums on. Also, make sure you take the cables off before you put the drums on so there's no uh, extra pressure on the shoes by having the, uh, the expanders opening up the shoes at all. Getting ready to take off the main cable that goes to the uh, right side perch anyway I got the, the cable off I got the perch off or I should say I got the uh, lever off and I had to take off the nut and screw that holds the lever on some perches you'll have a bolt like this or a screw whatever you want to call it and uh, it won't have a nut on it. It'll actually screw in the perch. And some you'll have a nut on them. So you need to pay attention to that. So after I had took this nut off, I had to knock out the, the bolt with the, a punch. They get stuck in there sometimes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. My new front cables come with pins, nuts, and springs, which I wasn't paying attention to. I end up buying some more off of cheap cycle parts, so I got a spare set. So it doesn't really bother me. I wish I would have known it. I probably wouldn't have bought the other ones. But whatever, I got spares now. That's pretty nice to have. So this is a really quality part for $80. And uh, it's something that you're probably going to have basically have an impossible time finding new. So this is really is a steal here. $80 for totally new front cables with everything you need basically got that on ebay i'm not sure the seller but i got it on ebay I'm sure there's more up there yeah i got the cables on and i got the adjuster set which is basically at the very beginning of adjustment uh that's awesome having all that adjustment once again that's one thing about old four-wheelers and dirt bikes and stuff uh, with these drum brakes or uh, cable brakes it seems like Whenever you get it, it's already almost maxed out, and it's just an annoyance. Now I got all this fresh adjustment to work with. It's probably the last almost the life of the four wheeler, maybe. We'll see. The way it's ridden, anyway. The routing was a little bit of a pain, but not too bad. Just gotta tighten down the junction box. Coming up through. Got to hook it up to purchase, and then. Uh, adjust it up here and then uh, move on to the back brakes okay so I jacked up the rear took off the wheel started taking the cables off and then disassembling the brakes anyway got down to the outer cover and uh, anyway here's the shoe for the one side for the pad I'm really mixing that up anyway you got the pad for the one side it looks really good fortunately the other side uh, I can't get to right now because these screws are freaking stripped out. Well, I just finished them off, so I'm going to have to grind these off. And I'm going to do that at a later date, unfortunately. So I'm going to reassemble this and put the new cable on and adjust it. But who knows what the condition is of the shoe on the other side because just maybe someone just replaced this side and not the other side. 
don't know. So I really need to get that checked out. So I'm going ahead to finish this video up, put the shoe back in, reassemble everything, put a new cable on, and do before and after. But I mean, it's overall this project is to be continued in order to get the other side. I took a short little ride to. Uh, um, stretch out the cables and see how it feels came back and readjusted everything when I readjusted everything I saw that the uh, Cable was rubbing on the wheel after about five minutes um, I see the original part has a longer steel guide so unfortunately uh, I had to it didn't really do anything to the cable it, it wore out wore a small hole in the weather protecting outer layer of course the steel core is fine Outer core, I should say. Anyway, uh, I wrapped it with electrical tape to try to, you know, keep the weather resistance on it on a brand new cable. And unfortunately, I had to freaking zip tie it to the tie bar so it doesn't touch the wheel. I got full range of motion. Everything feels fine. I did the same thing on the other side. So that's just one of the drawbacks of buying OEM parts is things just don't work. Or I should say aftermarket parts is uh, things just don't work the way they're supposed to because it's, I don't know, it's almost like they don't try to stuff sometimes, but whatever. It is still a new part and this should work even though it's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, I hate doing stuff like that. That's usually why I try to, you know, buy new stuff because you want stuff right, but... Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do.